Hey, good morning again. Michael Pinsky from the Lipinski Design Group. All right, so scheduling parts. We don't have time to dally. We can't rest on our laurels. Not in this industry. Moves too quick. Okay, now, I'll try to stay at a reasonable pace for the benefit of you and I. Scheduling parts. Another valuable aspect of using parts is the ability to schedule them. Essentially, a cleaner way to generate material takeoffs. You can create parts and parts schedules. As we've seen, parts uh, are, are, are relatively easy to create from the building model. Um, and now we could create a part schedule in the same manner as you would for other object categories. On the View tab, click Schedule, Schedule Quantities, and choose the Parts category. On the View tab, on the Schedules, on the Create panel, the Schedules button schedules quant Schedule Quantities. Select the Fields tab of the Schedule Properties dialog box, and you see the available fields. With a Parts Schedule, you can report the original category of the object along with the part material and the usual geographic information. Excuse me. There is also a field named construction that indicates whether the part was derived from a core layer or a finished layer. This field can then be used as a filter and or sorting criteria in your schedule. Figure 20.6 shows an example illustrating the results of a part schedule. Now that figure I'll just uh, I'll emulate it real quick so you get a better idea because I don't want to pick the book up and show you. Not very professional. So basically it's original category, construction, material, length, height, and area. Uh, original category, uh, original category, construction and material. Original category, construction and material. Um, oops, I'm sorry. First, we have to go to parts, right? Let's create a parts schedule. And uh, original category, construction, material. And then we got a uh, length, height, and area. Then we have length. Height, oops, yeah, you yeah. length, height, and area. And not necessarily in that order. It's in length, height, area order. So this goes up, length, height, and area. So if I create that, and you can see you can create a parameter, carry a formula, combine parameters, blah, blah, blah. Let's not going to do that. Make a note of it. Okay. So boom, we have this uh, schedule. And as you can see, it's a little more granular than, than the uh, schedule quantities take off from just selecting a stacked wall or, or a floor. But in, in this instance, um, in this instance, you can see uh, it created um, some parts down here, right? You can see some, some parts created here. Now, after... Uh, as you, as you identify objects to be included in an assembly, you can also choose from a variety of views in which to document the element in isolation from the rest of the project model. A collection of assembly views can be thought of as a shop drawing. Shop drawings, right? Making money with Revit. Let's take a look at the workflow for creating an assembly. In the following exercise, you can use any sample model to illustrate the process of creating assemblies. In any view of your project, select a few model elements. So let's go to the... Um, parts model. And let's grab, uh, let's take a look at this parapet area, this uh, top of the roof area here, this parapet. Let's grab some of these parts here. And let's not forget to get that. Let's get this brick soldier course. And let's, add, let's get the joist. Let's zoom in. Let me take a look here and make sure, oh, I got to get that other oh, little thermal layer there. I forgot what layer that is. That might be the pitched roof, tar. It might be tar. Right, so I got what I believe is enough to get us started. Now, once you uh, actually um, select, um, make sure that um, I try to pick a few that are relatively close to each other. From the contextual tab in the ribbon, the contextual tab in the ribbon, click uh, Create Assembly. You'll be prompted to name the new assembly. Now, within the context of selecting those items, the contextual ribbon opened, and in the Create uh, ribbon, which actually exists in the Modify tab without actually selecting anything. I mean, you can select the tool first, then select the components, as opposed to selecting the components or elements, and then selecting the tool. In this case, it, it's open anyway. It doesn't open within the context of selecting it. It's always open. 
in this case, um, I made a mistake. So create assembly. Let's create assembly from that. And you see it's prompting us for a name because we already have one created. This is the finished version of the model, not the start version. You see 20 parts finished. Uh, so I wanted to maybe expedite this because we got to get we got to get back into the field, right? In any event, all right, so phase five, phase four, we got to get back into it. All right, so boom. Uh, as you can see, within the properties, uh, pro project browser, you'll see another part was, uh, another uh, assembly was added to uh, the assembly directory. Okay, now, if you select objects from of different categories, such as a wall and a ceiling, you have the opportunity to select, to select which category the assembly will inherit. Choosing one category or the other does not seem to have an effect on the functionality beyond, beyond the organization that, it, that, that is exposed to the user. Been exposed to lots of organizations. Now, um, using identical assemblies, when you create a new assembly, the software automatically determines whether an identical assembly exists in your model. If one exists, the new assembly inherits the same name of the identical assembly. In a somewhat similar situation, if you were to create copies of an assembly throughout your project, the matching assemblies would function in a manner or in a similar way to how groups function. The fundamental difference between assemblies and groups is in the propagation of changes. If you have identical assemblies in a project and you change one of them, the name of the modified assembly is changed and is treated as a unique assembly. Make a note of that, that's a BIM manager note. Creating assembly views. After you have created an assembly, you can create a series of views that are dedicated to that assembly. In other words, you will see only the elements included in the assembly within these views. In addition, to plan sections and 3D views, you can generate parts lists and quantity takeoffs for assembly, for an assembly. To generate assembly views, select an assembly in any view and assembly views from the assembly panel in the contextual tab of the ribbon. You are prompted with a dialog box in which you choose the views assigned to the assembly. Now, select an assembly in any view. So now that we created an assembly, before I actually do that, let's, mouse, let's right mouse click on it for a second. And notice that yeah, you could also do what it said and, cl and click the assembly and in the contacts you can create views. But again, this is uh, something that you can use on multiple tools. You can right mouse clicks, right mouse click in the project browser and you'll see sometimes those commands become active as well. Because uh, it's relatively the same thing, just like anything else in Revit, this bi-directional associativity. So again, that uh, is, uh, is that. Now, uh, just a quick bin manager's note for you. You might want to look at what happens when you select certain items and you uh, even are not in a command and what happens when you mouse click your mouse. You'll be able to do things a little quicker, right? Like um, you'll be able to, uh, uh, and this is important to note, selection sets. You'll be able to select things a little quicker as opposed to plug around, picking things one by one, and holding down shift and control and all that stuff. So just explore that. It's important. It's important. But it's Windows intuitive, so you'll you'll get it. Um, anyone who knows anything about computers has a prerequisite in uh, computer application software. Should help. Uh, should do. That's why I, I, I tell you now, not then. I don't want to tell you now, not later. All right. So um, yeah. So once we click the assembly, we'll be able to create views from it. Right? Within the con you know, this one, within the context of selecting it, creates views, a parts list, a material takeoff, and a sheet for the selected assembly. You select the types of views you want, the desired scale, and title block information. The views are added to the project browser under the assembly type. Now, this particular tooltip shows us that, yeah, it's a, most, uh, a very good scenario. If you're going to create, if a mason is going to come in and create some ornate fireplace, then that's going to need to have its own... Uh, expanded uh, view, right, uh, and and be isolated in the model, so as to uh, really dig down deep into the nuts and bolts of what goes into making up that assembly. It can um, it can be very powerful. So create views, and as you can see, um, you can set the scale of the views and remember your scale factors. And I'm gonna go through them real quick because you know me. Watch the numbers. Two, four, six, eight. Who do we appreciate? Bears, bears, go bears! Right now, let's just leave it at that because we already have one for the assembly one. Um, but again, uh, it will include a title block, right? It will include a title block, and you can assign a view template to it. Now, let's keep going. Before we do that, now after you click OK, you will find the assemblies 
At the bottom of the project browser, under the assemblies grouping, you will find each assembly listed with all the associated views. So let's go back up to 24. And let's just hit OK. And boom, there they are. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean they're all arranged on the sheet, but they are there for you. Now, let's keep going. Now, the show dialog box is showing exactly what I just showed you. They also show another dialog box, pull out, or, or at least illustration here in the book, showing the, what I just showed you. And then it, it concludes with a passage that goes uh, 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 like this. Although sections are automatically placed for the included elements, the individual views are not placed on the assembled sheet. To do this, activate the sheet within an assembly and then drag and drop the views onto the sheet. Note that assembly views can be used on non-assembly sheets. As Note that assembly views can be used on non-assembly sheets, and regular views can be placed on an assembly sheet. Very good. Um, an example compiled into an assembly sheet is shown in figure 20.30, which I don't have, uh, can't show you here, but let's just see if parts one was able to give us that, uh, that, uh, nope, they didn't. But what we could do, if we want, maybe we could drag it out, put one view over there, and then we can go to, uh, then it's just a schedule material takeoff. Maybe we can put that over here. It's a little tiny, but again, it is, it is what it is. Let's bring this one over here, parts list. Let's put that over here. And notice how the, uh, the um, this is like a, a hidden dynamic snap line that allows you to, to align, ah, eh, your sister, excuse me, <laughs> align these uh, views up by all sorts of different uh, alignment uh, dynamic uh, key squares for lack of a better term and again when you are in the AutoCAD realm you'll start to see that a lot of these terms change, but they're the same all right now I don't want to go too far into that you get the point you get the point um, I guess I could put in a, an elevation if I want right let's drag in an elevation get this a little more uh, concise um, uh, what else we got here Elements, elevation back detail section a maybe we can grab that I'm just I'm holding down the click button and dragging it over and then releasing the, the left mouse button when I get it here. And if you wait a few seconds, you'll see, boom, it aligns right up. And again, the, the beauty of this is um, goes beyond the realms of imagination. All right, so you can do this, right? You can do this if you want to. If you don't, you don't. I'm not saying this is for everybody. But if you aspire uh, to do uh, this, you can do it. Now... The bottom line, add revisions to your project. You need the ability to track changes in your design after sheets have been issued. Issued to bid, bulletin one, and two. Adding revisions to a drawing is an inevitable part of your workflow. Master it. How do you indicate revisions on a drawing sheet? Use digital markups. DWS provided lightweight means to digitally transfer and mark up multiple sheets in a document set. Master it. Explain the workflow using DWF markups. Model for construction. Parts and assemblies allow a model element to be broken down into small parts. These sub-elements can be used in more detailed ways for the construction process while maintaining, or still maintaining, their association with the original element. Master it. Describe the method for breaking down a design-based model assembly uh, into its individual components. So, there's some homework for you to do. Go back on the chapter, practice it, and we'll be good to go. Because now, the wonderful world of presenting your design. Now, um, keep your thinking caps on. They, that's the construction phase? Absolutely not. There's a lot more to that, right? There's a lot more to that. Again, but think about this. Not only are you going to be able to market yourself into the architectural or engineering realm, but you'll also be able to market yourself to the construction sector, right? And the manufacturing sector. And, 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 and any other area that coexists within the realm. The real estate sector, right? This is articulation the education sector, governmental sector. Uh, it goes on and on and on. It goes on. It's limitless. It's the Da Vinci machine. It is.